The no crank situation deals with the primary electrical system of the truck. If you look at your batteries, you have those great big cables that are, you know, big around like your thumb. They go down to the starter, that go to the starter solenoid and whatnot. It's very important that the primary electrical system works correctly from the very beginning, even if it's only marginal. The reason being is that the future diagnostics build upon this system working correctly. If the primary electrical system is not working correctly, all the other diagnostics that we're going to do later in this module uh, are going to be irrelevant. We're, we might get misdiagnosed because of a problem in this system. So it's crucial to look at this system every single time before you go to the next step. It's a real tragedy to spend a lot of money replacing something like a high pressure oil pump when the only real problem was the fact that the batteries didn't have enough heat in them to spin the engine fast enough to build high pressure oil. Unless this is working correctly, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. That's why it's so important to start here first. This is one of those classic situations where an inexperienced mechanic can spend a lot of time, money, and effort chasing his tail. You have to start here. If you don't start here, then you can end up throwing lots of money at very expensive parts and repairs needlessly. This system has to work correctly. That's why I designed this module in the manner that I did, that you start at one end and you go to the other. It may turn out that all of the components and the, and, and the things involved with the primary electrical system are fine in your truck, but you have to determine that before you go to the next step. So let's get started. Let me show you how to do this. It's very simple. The primary electrical system of the Power Stroke diesel truck is made up of two batteries, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. Now, if you have a van that's built after 1998, your second battery will be down on the frame rail. It won't be on the driver's side. It will actually be down on the frame rail of the truck. And you will find it right underneath the door, right here bolted into a box. This makes it somewhat inconvenient to test this, but I'm going to show you a trick to do it. Also part of the primary electrical starting system is a starter solenoid. It's located right on the firewall, right on the passenger side. The other component is the starter, which is located underneath the truck. First thing we need to do is check both the batteries and the terminals. And we kind of do that at the same time. One of the first things I do when I get a truck in that doesn't start is I just go and see if the terminals are loose. Now you see if they're loose like that or there's a lot of corrosion buildup on them, then it's a good idea to go ahead and service that right away. Take them loose and give them a good cleaning with a, you know, a simple tool that you can buy at the auto parts store for a couple bucks. Okay, I'll show you how to use this. But this is a tool that you will use quite often. In fact, if you have my longevity series, you'll know that in the checklist that I recommend doing every 5,000 miles is that you do this. You clean your terminals and check your batteries. This will help you avoid a battery problem before it happens. One of the things that you want to check on your batteries is the date. Now you see I bought these June of 2006 and it's April of 2007 now, so I've still got a couple years left on this. Batteries as a general rule only last a couple years. Both of these batteries have to supply all the cold cranking amps. Number one, to crank this big engine over and over, okay, so all the pistons and everything are going up and down fast enough to create combustion. That's number one. Number two, it's got to be able to create enough power to the starter solenoid to go ahead and fire the glow plugs, which is like a dead short. And it has to be able to do all this and not let the power drop below 11 and a half volts to be able to power the entire electronic system of this truck. That's why you have two great big batteries in here. I recommend if you're going to replace your batteries to go with nothing less than a thousand cold cranking amps and the highest level battery you can get. Every time that I bought cheap batteries, I've regretted it. Now these are from Walmart, these Everstarts, and this is the second time I've had them replaced. And if I have to go back again with these, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and get new batteries. I'm going to get a different type of battery and put it in some other vehicle because these just haven't stood up well for me. Nothing against Walmart, but you know what? You pay 58 bucks for a battery, you get what you pay for. Sometimes you're going to have to spend 100 bucks, even if you go with an interstate. Make sure it's the highest cold cranking amp battery. And it's listed right here on the top. Okay, right here on the top. This is 800 and 50 cold, uh, cranking amps at 32 degrees and cold cranking amps at 700. I recommend at least 850 if not more. First thing you got to do is take the batteries and isolate them. In other words, you got to take one of them loose from the other and set the, set the cable off to the side 
I use a simple old school battery tester. It has a needle in here that's over on the zero at the moment that will go back and forth depending on what the loads are and the, and the voltages. Let me show you how this works. Go ahead and connect the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive. Okay. Now you should see the needle after you have it connected you should see the needle all the way over here to the left. Now you see how I'm moving it back and forth? What I'm doing now is I'm pressing a load tester. Now we're going to load it out. And you see how it's stuck here at the thousand end? Right up there at the very top. That's outstanding. That's an excellent, excellent reading. Now, if you have a battery on a van, you, it's very inconvenient to have to go underneath here and pull that damn thing out. So what I do is, is I just hook it to this terminal, because this one's connected down there, right? And if the terminals are need cleaning or something of this nature, then I'm going to know right away if there's a problem down there. So, now we see that, and this is connected to this battery over here, so we see that it's at, at, right there at the high 12s, and we pull it down, and there it is. So now we've tested both batteries, so we've eliminated the batteries. The next step now is to take our tool here and go ahead and clean the battery terminals. We do this. See, the one end of this has a little wire brush on the inside. That's for cleaning the, the top mount, okay, here, and then the other one is for cleaning on this end, like so. Now I'm going to show you a poor man's way of testing batteries without using a tester. This is a little more difficult to do with a van, but we can show you. I only have the driver's side battery hooked up at this point, so we're going to test this battery. With the one battery hooked up, we go ahead and crank it, start it up, and you see where the voltage is. Now, you don't want the one battery, you don't want it to drop below the low line there. If it's going down to 8 volts as you crank this engine, then that's not good. You need to think about replacing that battery. After you've done your battery testing and, and you're done isolating the batteries and you've cleaned your battery terminals, go ahead and reattach the battery cables and make sure that they're tightened up good and tight. Uh, you don't want to go down the road with a battery loose. That can cause a serious problem. Make sure that they're good and tight. Now, if you've determined you have a battery that you feel is low in charge, then it's important to get the batteries charged and retest it. Your, your situation may not necessarily be the batteries, and we have to determine if the batteries are good or not. You may have a problem with your alternator. Okay? If the alternator is not charging correctly, then you may have an issue there. We need, we need to determine that now. One last thing about batteries before we leave them. If you replace one battery, replace them both. What happens is, is that if you have one battery that's bad, that means that the other battery's been working real, real hard to do all the work that the both of them were supposed to be doing. As a result, the other one's going to die fairly quickly. Always replace these batteries in pairs. 